This is the Locust Laser Weapon System. It is America's answer to a new, scary threat that the world has come to fear, weaponized drones. Inside the Locust is a delicate arrangement of a tracking system, a power system, and a laser output system, working together to detect, track, identify, and engage threats with powerful laser beams, like science fiction, but without the fiction. Locust uses high-resolution cameras and sensors that provide both a wide field of view for acquisition and narrow, high-precision views for tracking. The tracking is done via an advanced gimbaled electro-optical tracking system designed for tracking various threat sets in cluttered or clear skies. This gimbal unit features a fine tracking system, a powerful telescope, a laser rangefinder, an acquisition tracking system, and a targeting laser. With the target identified and locked on, the system's high-energy laser then kicks into action. The laser beam strikes the target to burn up some crucial component. This could be the drone's wings, where the drone will consequently lose its ability to stay airborne, or it could drill through the drone's exterior to heat up the wiring. It could even heat up the drone's explosive payload to prematurely detonate it, in the process blowing the drone itself to pieces. This ability to hard-kill targets with nothing but laser beams has long been a dream for armies around the world and has long been elusive to them. Drilling into metal objects with beams from miles away, despite weather conditions and the movements of the objects trying to escape being torched, is not as easy as it sounds. And to be clear, it doesn't sound easy at all. Yet the Locust weapon seems to have figured it out. In early May 2024, news broke that an American laser weapon had shot down multiple attacking drones during combat in the Middle East. Laser weapons have taken down multiple targets in test scenarios in the past, but in actual combat situations, this is a first. Although a U.S. Army spokesperson was unable to confirm or comment on the incident for security reasons, military insiders attribute the success to the palletized high-energy laser weapon, an $8 million drone killing machine and at the heart of the palletized high-energy laser weapon is none other than the Locust Laser System. The Locust System represents a culmination of the advancements made in laser technology over the years. It is designed for rapid deployment, being capable of setup in less than 15 minutes, and strikes with scalable 20-kilowatt laser beams effective against drones. Its integration with the Army's palletized high-energy laser weapon showcases its readiness for the battlefield today. The timing of the Locust for the U.S. Army is almost a miracle too. Recently, particularly in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Drones took center stage and haven't left since. They've posed a deadly threat, unable to be conquered by anything thrown at them. This doesn't mean they're impossible to shoot down. In fact, they're super easy to shoot down with the interceptor missiles of advanced air defense systems. The problem is, these interceptor missiles have price tags that reach into the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars apiece, while the drones cost roughly a few thousand dollars. The economics don't match up. A stockpile of air defense systems could quickly be depleted in taking out relatively cheap drones. And since the drones are relatively cheap, they can be produced in numbers and attack in swarms, which they usually do. The need for a cost-effective weapon to take out hives of drones became dire. Generals in the US and around the world looked to their engineers, desperate for a response to these drones. Luckily, there was a response, but the response had been impossible to build for decades. It was the laser weapon and now they had only a few years to build it. Over the last six decades, researchers, scientists, and engineers have spent tens of thousands of work hours trying to build the laser weapon. It began in 1960, Theodore Maiman, an American engineer and physicist working at Hughes Research Laboratories, successfully created the first working laser using a ruby crystal. At the time, it wasn't even hinted as a weapon, but rather as a groundbreaking achievement in physics, demonstrating how light could be amplified and directed into a coherent beam. However, the potential applications for such technology were quickly recognized, particularly by the military. The 1960s and 1970s marked an era of experimental research into laser applications for defense. Early efforts focused on using lasers for non-lethal purposes like rangefinding and target designation for conventional weapons. The U.S. military was particularly interested in the potential of lasers to intercept missiles during their boost phase, leading to projects like the Airborne Laser, where a Boeing 747 was outfitted with a chemical laser. However, these early systems were plagued by issues such as size, 
power requirements and the problem of atmospheric distortion, known as blooming, where the laser's energy disperses in the air, reducing its effectiveness over distance. The Airborne Laser Program in particular, which ended in 2011, ended as a costly $5 billion failure. The impracticality of a massive airliner cruising the skies to shoot missiles got bright as day, so the focus shifted to more practical and deployable systems. The advent of solid-state lasers in the late 20th and early 21st centuries marked a significant step forward, offering better efficiency and lower maintenance costs compared to earlier gas or chemical lasers. One of the first operational laser weapons was the U.S. Navy's an eq 3 laser weapon system, which was deployed on the USS Ponce in 2014. This system demonstrated the capability of lasers against small boats and drones, showing the world that laser weaponry was no longer just on paper, it was real. The 2000s tens were pivotal for laser weapon technology, with a surge in development toward systems that were not only powerful, but also compact and mobile. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and Blue Halo began developing systems that could be integrated into various military platforms, from ships to ground vehicles. The laser weapons built at this time proved able to counter drones at a fraction of the cost of traditional munitions, a much desired ability today. Some of the most notable of these include Athena from Lockheed Martin, the Helws from Raytheon, and Locust from Blue Halo. The Locust is reportedly the first and remains the only laser weapon to have a say in actual combat, but it will very likely not be the last. The US Army is building on the recent successes it's made with laser weapons and is simultaneously funding multiple laser weapon development programs. Backed by multiple millions of dollars and partnered with the biggest names in the American industrial complex, the U.S. Army has gone all in on laser weapons. The reason is simple. The benefits of the laser weapon over traditional weapons are significant. Besides the low cost of fire, which can be as low as the cost of a cup of coffee, the laser weapon comes with other benefits, such as Third, a limitless magazine. The most lethal traditional weapons on the battlefield today launch projectiles at targets to take them out. While this has proven effective for well over a century, this arrangement comes with one fatal flaw. Running out of ammo, no arrows, no bullets, no missiles, means no way to dominate the battlefield until stock is reloaded. Laser weapons solve this. They don't launch projectiles. Instead, they attack their targets with scorching beams generated in-house. Therefore, as long as they're connected to power sources that enable them to generate these beams, they can keep shooting and taking out targets. A truly limitless magazine. Second, speed of light attack. American physicist Theodore Maiman made it clear that lasers are a form of light. Therefore, laser travels at the speed of light, 180,000 miles per second. They are the fastest things in the universe. No known target moves that fast, or even remotely close to it. Once the laser weapon locks on a target, the target is very likely getting hit. This is where the incredibly high hit rate of the laser weapon comes from. First, autonomous operations. Laser weapons generally operate autonomously when given the go-ahead to operate. They aim at and track targets that move at supersonic speeds with beams that travel at the speed of light. Therefore, they need to operate very swiftly more swiftly than the human mind and hands could probably comprehend. This is why they must work with as little human involvement as possible. The benefit of this is an array of protective weapons working around the clock without having to be piloted by anyone. The list of capabilities goes on and on and on, enough to convince the U.S. Army that it's worth a try. The service launched programs with the sole purpose of building and deploying these revolutionary weapons. Some of the programs have progressed quite nicely too. In addition to Blue Halo's Locus, there is also a few even more interesting. Third, IFPC Hell. The IFPC Hell full name indirect fire precision capabilities. High Energy Laser is a ground vehicle system armed with a 300 kilowatt laser tasked with defeating both light and heavy threats. With over 10 times more power than the Locust has, it's not just drones that should be worried about this one. Rockets, artillery, mortars, and even fixed-wing aircraft could find themselves in the crosshairs of the IFPC Hell. The core of the IFPC Hell initiative is to integrate high-energy laser technology into existing defense systems, offering rapid response and precision engagement capabilities that enhance combat effectiveness. With Lockheed Martin leading this initiative, armed with over four decades of experience with laser, there's a very high chance the program is moving along nicely. Second, Leonidas. 
Leonidas isn't a laser weapon, but rather a microwave weapon worthy of mention. Like a laser weapon, it aims to destroy targets with directed energy. Leonidas uses a large, upright antenna array that looks like a giant, metallic fly swatter to aim and shoot microwave beams, also known as electromagnetic pulses or EMPs, at drones to fry out their electronics. Leonidas is one of the first microwave-based weapons in the US military. The system unit can be loaded up in a trailer or deployed on a striker infantry combat vehicle. In 2024, Epirus, the system's developer, delivered four Leonidas armed striker vehicles to the US Army for testing. First, DE M. Shored. This is the 60 kilowatt Deer M. Shored, full name the Directed Energy Maneuver, short range air defense laser weapon. It is mounted on a striker infantry combat vehicle and armed with a 60 kilowatt laser for taking out unmanned aerial vehicles and other similar sized targets. It can take out these targets from up to five miles away in whatever way possible. Dazzling sensors, scorching parts to cause aerodynamic failure, disabling engines, detonating fuel supply, or an explosive payload, like laser weapons are generally designed to. A particularly interesting capability of the DEM Shored is its level of intelligence. The weapon is, in cases of multiple targets, able to autonomously determine which of the targets should be destroyed, first depending on how much of a threat each target poses. The U.S. Army and its partners have been busy. More laser programs are taking shape and preparing for the battlefield like Locust. Locust is already poised to be a game changer, enhancing force protection while overcoming the limitations of traditional munitions. Its success not only bolsters the U.S. Army's defensive capabilities, but also sets a benchmark for future military technologies. The collaboration between manufacturer Blue Halo and the U.S. Army could very well lead the charge in transforming ground warfare, making engagements more precise, less costly, and decisively more effective. To acknowledge a bright, dominant future for the U.S. Army and U.S. military as a whole, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.